I've even got food on my table.
I thank God for, for being here today. I think we all have storms we have to go through. Um, I feel like I've been going through the, a storm for the last almost two years. Um, so you pray for me, I'll pray for you, because you've got to hear this. <laughs> Oh, 
know, we all go through storms. We all go yeah. through trials. We all go through temptations. And sometimes we need help. A lot of times I need help. But sometimes we need help in legal matters. Sometimes with our health. Sometimes with our finances. But you know what? God's never short on meeting and supplying the need. Whatever the need is. Whatever the storm is you're going through. You know, one of the, one of the things we teach our kids when they're growing up is we ask them, we say, how much do you love mommy or how much do you love daddy? What do they say? I love you this much. When you're going through a storm, and you think about the question that was posed, how much do you love me? Jesus spread his arms. And he said, I love you this much. And he gave it himself. So no matter what kind of hand you feel as though you've been dealt, God has never, ever shortened being able to supply whatever the need is. Because there's only two winning hands that have ever been known in history. And they were nailed to a tree. Wait. <laughs>
praise the Lord, you know, for everything that he means to me. And, you know, when I read this story about the woman that touched the hem of his garment, that lets us know that we can touch the hem of his garment. You know, we can be touched and healed and made, you know, set free from whatever is bothering you. I thank God because he has made the way for each and every one of us. And I love him this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, touch in Jesus. It's all. some folks since a week today you just don't know what they have been through mm -hmm. and what they've dealt with and still what they are going through and only God knows you know sometimes people don't tell you everything they if it's in their lives and what's happening to them that's why we have a God in heaven that we can talk to in our hour of trials and, and hours of sorrow and our great needs that we may have and I'm glad to be in God's house for that very reason because in God's house good things begin to happen uh, people get saved, they get healed, they get delivered, they get set free, they get an answer from the Lord, amen, they get touched, they leave better than how they came in there, and that's my hope this morning that you feel that same way, is that you'll be able to leave here uh, in better shape than you was when you came in here. If you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Matthew chapter 7, I would like to begin reading that verse 7 this morning. How many enjoyed all the good singing this morning? Amen. You know, sometimes I know we may get lengthy in songs and stuff, but I'm going to tell you right now, when you get to heaven, that's what heaven is going to be about. Yeah, songs and worship and praise and honor and glory. And I think songs kind of set the atmosphere to preach the word Amen. and to receive from God. Amen. So I appreciate all the singers here and all the musicians, and they do a mighty fine job in what they do for the Lord. Because they love him so much, and they do a great job. Amen. Matthew 7, chapter verse 7. If you dare say, I am there. I am there. In verse 7 it says, this is what Jesus, in his writings, he spoke these words. Ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall what? Find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there of you whom you... If you have a son, ask bread, will he give him a stone? If you ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If, he, if you then been evil, look at verse 11 here, if you then been evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give things, good things to them that ask of him? I came across the scripture this week, and as I was reading it, and I, I know it's talking about asking and seeking and knocking, and receive it back from the Lord. But kind of in verse 11 there, when it talks about how you've been evil and how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them to ask Him. As I looked at that, I believe it takes a great amount of trust to go to a God in heaven, that our Creator, if you will, and begin to trust Him with everything in your life. Now, we are evil people sometimes, and as we're sinners, we were evil, and even as Christians, we still mess up along the way. Amen. But yet, we know how to give good things to them that ask. Come on, and there are people around us, your family included, is that again, trust you with many things in their life to help them out with. When you think about Jesus again, how much more will he give us? Yeah. And many people today do not believe that. They, they think God will save them through the Son, Jesus Christ, but that's the end of the story. But I believe this morning that we need to learn how to trust Him more in all things. 
He wants to give us so much more than we have even today. But I believe that will come through trusting him in every aspect of our life. There was a young man that 10 years old that walked into the ocean down by the beachside there in the ocean and he saw a lady sitting on the, on the sand and he walked up to her and he asked her a question, are you saved? She said, yes. He said, do you read your Bible? She said, yes. Well, do you pray? She said, yes. He said, good. I've got two quarters, and I'm going to give them to you, and I trust you to keep them safe. Because I'm going to go into the ocean to swim a while, and I'll be in and out of the water, and I trust you to take care of this while I'm doing my business out there. Do you know sometimes we need the same thing in our own life? While we're coming in and out of the waters of life around us, we need to learn how to trust someone with what we are going through. Can somebody say amen? amen. The one thing I begin, begin to realize, I trust my God with my soul. Amen. Even though I'm up and down and in and out, it seems like sometimes I don't understand what to do in the world that we live in, the waters of life overtake me. I can say this to my, in my soul this morning, is I do trust my God, amen, to save me, to heal me, to deliver me, and set me free, and one day take me home. Can somebody say amen? amen. But while I'm struggling through this whole world, I need to learn how to trust amen. Him in all the aspects of my life. Amen. Like that young man, he said, I've got two quarters. Now, that may not mean much to you, but to him, that was valuable. Amen. And he said, I trust you because you're a Christian to take care of this for me. Right. And I believe this morning we understand the aspect of what trust really is. How much more does God want to give us if we only learn how to trust him? Amen. If you have love for your family, think about how much more love God has for you. Yeah, if you can bless your family financially, again, how much more can God bless you financially if you trust Him the time when it seems like you don't know what to do? Yeah. We need to learn how to trust in God. Amen. See, the children of Israel learned how to trust the Lord when they came to the Red Sea. The Egyptian army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them. And they did not have anywhere else to go. But Moses would pray to God. And God would tell him to tell the children of Israel. He said, I know the sea is in front of you. And the Egyptian army behind you. He said, but stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. And in other words, put your trust in God. And let God have control. And God will bring you through every time. Give someone say amen. Well, you know the story and how it went. How a strong east wind came, part of the water, dried it out, and they walked across on dry land yeah. because they trusted in the Lord. Yeah. Daniel was a man also they felt guilty. And this is something I want to be found guilty of also, and I hope you do too. But he felt guilty of praying way too much. Amen. Anybody here guilty of that this morning? No. If they took you to court for praying too much, can you say guilty as charged? Well, you know, again, they made a proclamation that nobody would pray to any other God except the king himself. There were three men that did not like who Daniel was, and they came around where he was, even though Daniel knew, amen, that had been signed, the degree had been signed, that for 30 days nobody can pray to any other God. And what did they find Daniel doing? Why, wow, he was on his knees and praying. Again, the Bible said he would pray it as always. He would face toward Jerusalem and open his window and begin to pray. Amen. Even though he knew he was in danger of going to the den of lions if he did not obey what the king said to, but he trusted the Lord anyway. Amen. He prayed as always, the Bible said. And when they threw him in the den of lions, what did he do? I believe. Even though there were lions in that, in that cave that he was in, even though the den was full of lions, I'll guarantee you one thing, he began to trust in the Lord. And somebody say amen. I believe Daniel found a lion even though they were hungry. I believe he became his pillow and I believe he slept through the night. Oh, but the king was troubled because of what he had done. He went back to the palace and he would walk the floor all night long and been worried about Daniel. But that next morning, the king would raise up and go to the den of lions and hear what he would say. Oh, Daniel. 
Oh, Daniel, is the king whom you serve able to deliver you? Daniel expected, I mean, the king expected an answer back, or he would never ask the question. Right. Amen. What did Daniel say? He said, Oh, king, live forever. The angel of the Lord had came down and, and again gave the lives locked y'all. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Yeah. It might help some prisoners get the wrong God. I don't want to go there. <laughs> but Daniel trusted the Lord in the midst of the den of lions. Here they both were. The Red Sea was troubling. And the men alive were troubling. And it seemed like they both were in despair. And their lives could be in jeopardy. And they could have died in the midst of all that. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. We still have a God on the throne. Amen. He knows how to give good gifts unto us. He knows how to give us more than we ever thought possible. Can someone say amen? Woo, glory be to God. We need to learn how to trust in him. In the book of Psalms 62 and 8, David said, trust in him. Now, you cannot trust in someone you do not know. Amen. And Paul would say it this way, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Daniel was saying, or Paul was saying, I just want to know Jesus. Amen. David said, trust in him. How can you trust in him if you don't know who him is? And that means you've got to be saved. You have a fellowship with the Lord. And once you know him, but again, Paul David said, trust in him. When do we do this? At all times. Amen. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. And God is a refuge unto us. So again, David said, trust in him. Now, I can put a certain amount of trust in people. I, I do trust some people. Even a doctor, sometimes you'll trust that they'll give you the right medication or to even do the surgery right while you're sleeping. You have to have a amount of trust. But there comes a time when man is limited to what he can do for you. But I have a God who can. Can someone say amen? I said I have a God who can. Because the Bible said that with God, all things are possible. And that's the kind of God I want to trust in. That's the kind of God I want to hold on to. That's the kind of God I want to know in my life every day. And I want to learn how to trust in him at all times. Amen. And what that simply means when it going gets good, trust him. Go on, gets bad, trust him. Amen. We people sometimes are really a mess. Yeah. We want to live on the mountaintop, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But don't put me in that valley, because I do not like it. Right. Can I tell you something? God ought to be greater in the valley than he is on the mountaintop. Can someone say amen? And you need to trust him more in the valley than you do on the mountaintop. Yeah. And you begin to realize in your own life that many times we're guilty of that and that we serve the Lord and we praise Him and love Him and honor Him when everything is good. But I'm telling you right now, He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't matter what kind of storm is in your life today or what you may be going through or what you may have lost along the way, He is still God. And He's the kind of God that we can trust to bring us through every time. So trust in Him at all times. Trusting in someone is a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. Because many people have been let down time and time again. We've been let down and people have disappointed us. But the Bible teaches you and I don't put your trust in man. They will fail you. They will disappoint you. And they can't always do what you need done. But I have a God. I said, I have a God. I said, I have a God. And I pray you have the same God yeah, that you yeah. can trust Him. Amen. Trust in Him with everything about your life. Amen? Amen. I mean, really what I want to talk about this morning is why we can trust God. Amen. Why can we trust Him? Let me give you some scriptures this morning. Because I found out that many people sometimes even distrust God. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't get it their way and they prayed a certain prayer. Oh, and they wanted something from God. And God did not give it to them the way they thought God should. 
Matter of fact, they didn't get what they thought they should. And I'm glad you didn't get what you think you should. Because we all deserve death. Can someone say amen? So be very careful what you pray for. But I'm telling you right now, many people just trust God because they feel let down of God. Have you been there before? I know many people who have and simply said, I don't know if I believe in God anymore. I don't know if I want to go to church anymore. I'm just going to throw in the towel and I'm going to quit. You know why they say those kind of things? It's because they lost their trust yeah. in a living God. But I tell you right now, if you stay alive in Him and stay in the yeah. Spirit and stay in the Word and keep your faith intact, it doesn't matter what kind of storm comes your way in and out of your storm we have a God will be there God will be there now what can we do how can we trust God why do we trust him first of all I want to tell you something I trust my God because he doesn't lie to me come on now Amen. Amen. let that sink in I said, I trust my God because he doesn't lie to me. Yeah, Somebody said, preacher, do you have scripture? Yes, I do in Numbers 23 and 19. Numbers 23 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Right. I'm telling you today, I trust a man like that. If I knew all you folks, including myself, could do that, I would trust you even more. Amen. I think you would trust me even more. But how many know the Bible says let God's word be true yeah, and every man a liar? Yeah, come on right. now. Yeah. But we're talking about a God that we can trust today. And this is one of the reasons I trust in him is that he cannot lie. He cannot go against himself. Amen. And the Bible says that God's word is forever settled in heaven. Yeah. If I read yeah. my Bible and I look at this word and I believe what it says, I can count on one thing. My God will do it. Yeah. If God brings me to it, I believe he can bring me through it because yeah. I have a God who can and he doesn't lie to me. He will bring me through. Amen. Look at this again. He thought a man that he should lie. If he said it, he will do it. Yes. Now what kind of trust do you have in a God like that? Has anybody ever let you down like that? Has Christians ever lied to you? Are we honest in here? You know they have. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever lied to anybody? Yes. I said, no. Did you cheat on your taxes? You lied. There you go. Come on, man. Let's be true. You tell somebody you're going to do something, then do it, you lied. <laughs> How many times does somebody come to you and say, pray for me? You say, I will. Walk in your way and never do it. Come on, man. You lied. <laughs> See, we all, we all fall in that category. Yeah. And that's how we get messed up many times because we feel like somebody let me down. Get your eyes off of man, get your eyes off the world, and get your eyes back on the yeah. Lord. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, yeah. the author and the finisher of our faith. And I believe when you look to him, amen, you can say again, Jesus Christ is the word, and the word is Jesus Christ. He's the one I can count on. He's the one I can trust in. He's the one that died for my sin. He's the one who will take me home when this world's all over with. Because he does not lie. That's the number one reason that we can trust in him. We can trust him in him also because he cares about me. Yeah. Amen. How many cares about me? Amen. One, One two, three, four. I'm up here counting and some of you still didn't raise your hand. I might have my son to turn the video around and catch their body. I think you care about me. Yes. Well, your caring only goes so far. Amen. Only so far. Yes. There are times in my life I've been so heartbroken that nobody could help me. Right. I thought to my wife, and she has counseled me. She, I didn't know that. I, you didn't know she had a degree in counseling, boy. <laughs> I told her the other day. I said, "All I got to wore you out." <laughs> Because when I leave the church service and I'm going through things and I don't talk to you people very much about things, but boy, she gets a truckload when I get home. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, and I, I don't know what to do. I need an answer from God, and I just don't know what to do. And she didn't tell me pray. I said, I did. I need help. I need help. And she prayed for me, prayed with me, prayed on me, dumped all, all over me, and did whatever it takes. I'm still not getting the answer. Come on, man. 
I'm going to trust in a God that I know above everyone else that cares about what I'm going through. He understands me. Matter of fact, he knew I'd go through it before I ever got there. He knew what my day would be like before it ever happened. I can trust a God, amen, that knows everything about me. He knows my lying down. He knows my rising up. He knows everything I'm thinking. He knows what I'm going through. I have a God that cares about me. That's why I can trust him. Do you ever feel like nobody loved you or cared about you? Do you ever feel like you're a Lone Ranger? Let me go a little go that even worse. How many feel like you're a Lone Ranger without a horse? <laughs> Terrible. I mean, we've all been there and throwing pity parties about ourselves that nobody loves me, nobody cares. I've been there. I've been there. And some of you honestly would say the same thing. You've been there too. Yeah. We all have pity parties. When you throw that party, nobody shows up. It's even worse. You know what it is. But you have to understand something. You're not the one that makes me feel better. You're not the answer I need in a time of my problems. I believe that you can pray for me and you, God will direct me through your prayers. But the end result is I have got to put my faith in a God that I can trust and that cares about me. Peter said that this way in 1 Peter, the epistle, 1 Peter 9 and 7. Casting all your care upon him. Why would I do that? Why would I cast my cares upon him? I talked to Dwayne. He didn't help me. I talked to my wife. She didn't help me. I talked to other people. They didn't help me. I talked to George. He didn't help me. And now here I am not getting any help whatsoever. Why would I trust in a God? But it seemed like everything let me down. I tell you why I trust in the God. First of all, he created me. Yeah. And then secondly, he said to cast my care. If I've got a problem of any kind, I need to cast my care up on him. And here's the reason why. For he cares for me. He cares about me. He cares about what I'm going through. He cares about me. That's why I trust him. That word cast means to discard. How many, how many know when you have garbage in your house and it begins to stink? What do you do? Look it up. Every Friday morning, my garbage is sent by the curb for Robert to pick it up. Do you know why Robert can pick up my garbage? Because I do not want it any longer. I have no use for it. It's stinking. I want to discard that. You don't see me behind Rumpke truck on Friday morning when they dump my garbage in their truck. I don't hop in my car, chase them down, and say, hey, hold on a minute. I want my garbage back. That would be stupid. When you get rid of something, you throw it away. Yeah. My point this morning is that when you give God your cares, He said to cast it upon me. I gave it away. I threw it away and hit hard arms. He now has control of that. He's the one that cares about what I go through. He is the fix that man. He'll come on the scene and he'll make everything all right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Woo! Glory be to God. Number one, he doesn't lie to me. Yeah. Number two, he cares about what I'm going through. Yeah. Number three, he watches over me. Yeah. Anybody here like to be pampered? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to the lion part again. <laughs> Does anybody here like to be pampered? Let's get real. Yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody likes to be pampered. Yeah. Do you know when God watches over you and I, he, we're his children, he, he pampers us. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to calm us down and soothe us. In Psalms 121, verses 5 through 8, it said, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth and evermore, he watches over me. He is my keeper. He is my shade. 
Again, he's my moon by night and the sun by day. He preserves me from evil. He preserves my soul. He's watching over me, taking care of me. Does that make sense to anybody here this morning? He is my keeper. And I'm the Lord, the keeper is the one to keep everything in order. Can somebody say amen? I've got a God in heaven because the Bible said that his eyes, that they go to and fro throughout the whole earth. Amen. I'm so glad that when I sleep, he's watching over me. Amen. Through the day, he's watching over me. Whatever I go to do, and wherever I'm at, I've got a God that will watch over me. Amen. Now, I never, I, I really don't want someone watching over me personally, physically. Most of us like our space, right? Yeah. But isn't it great to know that we have faith in our God that we can say it's all right. Yeah. That my God watches everything yeah. about me. Yeah. He preserves our soul. Yeah. He makes sure that, again, when we get off track, that the Holy Ghost brings that conviction. He has a way, again, that cared about us in such a way that he watches over everything we do. And I thank God that he is my keeper. Amen. He's the one that I can give my soul to, and he will keep it intact. Amen. He'll let me know when I'm doing wrong. He'll let me know when I'm doing right. He'll let me know when I'm slacking off. He'll let me know when I'm going forward. Amen. My God has a way through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That he keeps my soul where it needs to be. And I thank God I can trust a God like that. I, come on, give God a good hand clap this morning. I thank God I can trust Him. I trust Him because He promised to never leave me. All the married couples in here this morning, when you took your marriage vows, you said you love, you honor, you cherish, the death does part. Do you know you have no guarantee for the sure that would happen? You really don't. I mean, a lot of people are divorced today because they made that commitment and they broke that commitment. The next thing you know, divorce happened. They did not see it coming many times. And they thought that they would never leave each other. And they would always be together that way. But how many know we're married to a man called yeah, Jesus? Come on. come on, we are. Yeah. And look what he said right here in Hebrews 13 and 5. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with something as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, and I will never forsake thee. He hath said. I've told you before, God is not a man that he should lie. That is not a lie. I'm telling you this morning. If he said, I will not leave thee, and I will not forsake thee, that means I'm not going to leave your presence, and I'm not going to walk away from you. If anybody leaves anybody, it would be you and I and even the Lord. But as long as we trust in him, we have that heavenly promise. Amen. That God will not forsake us, and he will not leave us. I trust in someone like that. Amen. In other words, he has your back. Yeah. Aren't you, ain't any great feeling when someone has your back? Yeah. How many ever had some big brothers? Yeah. Did they ever take you up for you? Yeah. Mine did. Yeah. See, I've always been scrawny. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not getting weight now, but I was even worse than a teenager. I mean, sometimes I turn sideways, my mom said, where'd he go? No. <laughs> I got in a fight at school one time. This guy was bigger. I mean, taller and bigger. He said, I'm going to beat you up after school. Oh, no. Now, you know what kind of day I had, right? Yeah. Don't tell me in the morning, tell me after school you're going to beat me up. <laughs> I had to worry all day. Yeah. Come on. I went to my brother, I said, I'm going to get beat up. He said, why? I said, because so, so, I think we had to argue about something. And he said, going to beat me up? He said, when? I said, after school. He said, I'll be with you. <laughs> so I got there. The guy going to beat me up was there and didn't see my brother. <laughs> I didn't want to be there. <laughs> so he started to... The boy started mouthing off to me, but even worse than my brother shows up. Mm -hmm. I heard you're going to be my brother up. He said, we're, we're cool, man. We're, we're cool. <laughs> fight never happened. Come on, man. You know why the fight never happened? Because my big brother showed up. Yeah. We have a friend that will stick closer than the world. Yeah. The 
I would tell us that we have a friend that will stick closer than a brother. I'm telling you right now, he has your back on everything that you do. As long as you stay in that word and live according to that word and walk in his presence and have faith in him and trust in him, he will have your back. Can someone say amen? That's why he'll never leave you. That's why he'll never forsake you. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you right now, the battle won't belong to you anyway. It belongs to God as long as you trust in him. How many times do we say, I don't know what I'm going to do? We go through things, I don't know what to do. I don't have the answer. Yes, you do. It's always in Jesus. We sometimes forget that. Yes, come on. We wring our hands, we walk the floor, we lose sleep because we don't know what to do when He was there all the time. He only said, I will not leave you, and I will not forsake you. You have to learn to trust in a God like that. With a promise like that. Yeah, I'm by myself and nobody cares. And I told you, he does care. Caster cares about him because he cares for you. He does care about your, your problem. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to ask him. Again, a little bit I just read here earlier. Again, in the scripture right here. That he knows how to give good gifts more than we do. He knows how to give us more than we can give our own children. Amen. We need to learn how to trust in God Almighty. Because again, he will not leave us. In your time that you are afraid. The Bible said in Psalms 56 3, it says, What time I'm afraid, I will trust in the Lord. Look where you got to get to. We live in a very fearful world today. I mean, I, I know people are waiting for the stimulus check, but I just kind of think they're trying to buy us off. Amen. You look how good I am to you. And behind the scenes, they're bringing in socialism and communism and all kinds of ungodly things. And they're trying to buy us off. Yeah, I ought to make you afraid. Can somebody say amen? amen? We live in that kind of world today. If you're not careful, you'll fall into the trap that they're trying to set for all of us. But I'm telling you right now, we ought to be afraid of what's coming upon this world. But when we get afraid, and when I say afraid, I mean concerned. Right. But when you get afraid about your own life, this is what the Bible said, do I would trust in thee. Yeah. Can I remind you again that when the disciples were on this ship, and the storm came. Where was Jesus? Sleeping. Sleeping. What were they doing? Oh no, oh no, oh no. We're going to drown. We're going to be killed. The, the water's coming in the boat. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. He was there all the time, folks. I said he was there all the time. And they lost sight of him because they focused on the problem and not the answer, which is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And they went to the hinder part of the ship and they woke him up and they said, Master, careth. Thou not that we perish. Yeah. Well, first of all, they didn't perish anyway. Yeah. Hey, they're saying we, we, we perished. Yeah. Yeah. No, you didn't. You may think you are going to perish. Yeah. You're afraid you're going to perish. Right. But Jesus is aboard your ship yeah. on the sea of life. Yeah. When you come in now that water of the sea of life, Jesus will take care of you. Yeah. Like the little boy that had the coins, I trust you because of who you are. Because you're a child of God. How many know we can trust who, who he is? Because he is the creator of all mankind. And I'm telling you right now, when fear comes around, and when you get afraid of your life and don't know what to do, he says, I will trust in the Lord. Amen. Make your mind up today. See, you don't have to psych yourself out. Have faith. That's the kind of God we can trust. Because he won't not forsake us. Don't be afraid. Very long. When, we, we all get fears. And I think fear is something we deal with every day. You'll conquer fear yesterday, it'll be back today. You'll conquer fear today, it'll come back tomorrow. But as Paul told Timothy, God never gave us a spirit of fear, but of blood, power, and of a sound mind. If God never gave you a spirit of fear, who did? Come on, man. You know who did? The devil will make you doubt what God can do. He'll make you mistrust what God can do. But as long as you know that word and walk in the Spirit of Almighty God and keep your faith in God Almighty, I believe you can trust Him amen, with everything you have and say, I know my God will bring me through. Amen. I'm going to close on this as you come to the song. I can trust Him because He's ever present in our times of trouble. Let me give you a scripture in Psalms 46.1. First of all, it says, God is our refuge. Look at the two words I want to look at first. God is. Mm -hmm. Going back to my point earlier, God is. That means God does exist. Mm -hmm. 
If you believe this word and it says God is, that means that God is for real. So God is what? My refuge. God is my strength. And God is a very present help in trouble. I'm here to tell you I trust him because he's ever present uh, when I'm in trouble. When, I, when things are good, he's with me. But when things are troubling me, he's still with me. Because I believe and I trust that God is. Somebody said you have never seen God. How do you know that? Because I have a witness of the Holy Ghost. As I prayed and got saved, and I read this Bible time and time again, I feel the witness of the Holy Ghost. There's a God in heaven. And I trust that God because he is. And he is my refuge, my hiding place. He's my strength when I'm weak. He's very present help when I'm in trouble. Who are you trusting today? You can't entrust in yourself like that. How I many of you didn't save yourself? You could not even save yourself. You never got saved until you begin to trust in God. And that God's Son died for your sin. You got to trust that. You never been healed before trusting in yourself. You got healed by believing the Word of God and trusting that God will do that. Who are you trusting today? And don't get me wrong. It's okay to trust each other to a limit. But how I many know it's, I don't think any of you seen a cape on my back, so I'm not Superman. I didn't drive up in a Batmobile, so I'm not Batman. I'm not the all-American hero. I'll tell you what I am. I'm a man standing before you today that trusts in God. Yeah. That's where my help comes from. Yeah. That's where my power comes from. That's where my strength comes from. That's who I am. That's who you are. Is in God. Maybe you lost that trust in the Lord this morning. Maybe you're going through things that you feel like God has let you down. Maybe you feel like that God doesn't love you anymore. Maybe you feel like that God has forsaken you. I gave you a scripture to tell you that's not true. That is not true this morning. But you've got to learn how to trust in Him. When God tells you to testify, trust Him. When God tells you to go pray, trust Him. When God wakes you up at 2 o'clock in the morning to read your Bible, trust Him. When it seems like you don't know what to do, learn how to trust in Him. Because the Bible says again, trust in Him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge unto us. Trust Him. Learn how to trust God. When your mind gets confused, your mind gets dismayed, seem like you're tormented to where you can't even sleep. You've got to learn to trust Him for the peace giver. Because my God will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. You're going to go through some things in life that's going to torment you physically and mentally. And at the end of all of that, you're going to look back and say, how did I keep the peace in the midst of all that trouble? Because you trusted God. The one that can give you peace that will surpass all understanding. We don't need to understand everything to learn how to trust in God. We just need to know that God can. And that God will. Please stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Maybe you're at the Red Sea this morning. Don't know what to do. Maybe you're in the dinner lines and don't know what to do. Maybe you're like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go in a fire furnace. Don't know what to do. They came out of the fire furnace believing God. They did not know what would happen, but one thing they told the king, they said, I know our God is able, but if he don't, we're not bound down to your image. And they came out of there with no harm whatsoever because they put their trust in the Lord. Amen. Whatever you need today, trust in Him. I'm going to ask you to get around the altar look all pray and seek the face of Almighty God. Come on. Let's come trust and believe in the Lord this morning. I know a God who can. And your feet. Thank you for coming out. Been a part of the service. We appreciate and love you. See you back here tonight. Say this with me. It's been good to be in the house. Oh, uh, Lord, God bless you. Have a great day.